All right, we're picking up with question number 12 on the pre-calculus midterm review. Um, the next few questions deal with rational functions. Those are the functions that look like fractions. And you have a question that asks you to find the vertical asymptotes, a question that asks you to find the y-intercepts, and then a question that asks you about the horizontal asymptotes. So this particular question starts with um, asking you about the vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur at the places at the place where the denominator is equal to zero or at the values of x that would cause the denominator to be zero. So my vertical asymptotes Vertical asymptotes occur at the x values that cause the denominator to be equal to zero. And so we need to make sure or determine what those values are, what numbers or number should we avoid? And so when I look at this problem and I look at the denominator, okay, that'd be these three pieces, x minus 3, x plus 1, and x plus 4. I'm going to take each one of those and set them equal to 0 because I don't want to avoid whatever number is going to make them equal to 0. So x minus 3 is 0, x plus 1 is 0, and x plus 4 is 0. And then I want to solve each one of those individually for x. And that's going to tell me where my vertical asymptotes are going to occur. So for x minus 3, we need to add 3 to either side to solve for x. So x is 3. Then I subtract 1 for x plus 1 to isolate the x. So I'll get x is negative 1. And... Then on the last one, we subtract 4 and we get x is negative 4. So this particular rational function has three vertical asymptotes. That's okay. You can have three. You could have five. You could have one. It is also possible that you don't have any. In this case, there are three. You have x equals 3, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 4. The next question um, is still a rational function. It's a different one, but it asks about finding the y-intercept. Honestly, to find the y-intercept for any function, whether it's a rational function, a quadratic, or a polynomial, whatever kind of function it is, to find the y-intercept, we let x equals 0 and we solve. And so if I do that for this problem, I have 3 times 0 squared minus 14 times 0 minus 5 all over 3 times 0 squared plus 8 times 0 minus 16. And then you can do the math. You'd have 3 times 0 minus 0 minus 5 over 3 times 0 plus 0 minus 16. So you have 0 minus 0 minus 5. 0 plus 0 minus 16. Ultimately, I have negative 5 over negative 16. Now be careful because remember, a negative um, divided by a negative is a positive. So ultimately... This is going to be positive 5 sixteenths, or 5 over 16. Now, pay attention to how they want you to write the answer. Do they want it as a fraction? Do they want it as a decimal? 
Um, and if they want it as a decimal, do they want it rounded? 5 sixteenths would be 0 0.3125. And if you were asked to round it to two places, it'd be 0 0.31. So pay attention to the instructions, okay? And notice how they want you um, to round the problem. Okay, question 14, still dealing with a rational function, and they want you to find the horizontal asymptote. Well, honestly, the first thing you should do here is decide whether or not a horizontal asymptote exists. Okay, and so to decide whether a horizontal asymptote exists or not, you have to compare the degree of the numerator to the de degree of the denominator. Okay, so you compare the degrees of the numerator, which we're going to denote with the letter N, and the denominator. Okay, remember when you're thinking about those degrees, the degree is the highest exponent. And there's really three things that could happen. It could be that the new degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. In that scenario, you do have a horizontal asymptote, and the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, you also have a horizontal asymptote, and it's equal to the ratio of the lead coefficients. If n is greater than d, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. So either you want to write those rules down on your note sheet that you can use for the midterm, or I suppose you could memorize them. Okay, it'd be easier if you write them on your note sheet, and so you might want to do that. Honestly, if I tell you to write it on there, it's probably a good idea to do that because that probably means you're going to see it on the exam. So if I look at this particular polynomial, the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is also 2. So I have, in this case, this second scenario. The degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. And so I do have a horizontal asymptote. It's going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients. Remember, those leading coefficients are the numbers in front of that high degree, which in this scenario, they happen to be the same value. It's a 2. So you've got 2 over 2. So ultimately, your horizontal asymptote would be at y equals 1. All right, next question says find the inverse of the function x minus 5 all over 3x minus 1. One of the things I want to remind you about is that in this format that f of x and y are the same value, okay? f of x and y are, they represent the same thing, okay? They're interchangeable. And I do that because it makes it a little bit easier when you're solving the problem to use y than f of x. And the first step to find the inverse is you want to interchange x and y, meaning basically wherever there's an x, you want to put a y, and wherever there's a y, you want to put an x. So you're going to rewrite the problem. So when I rewrite this problem, I have x equals y minus 5 over 3y minus 1. Wherever there was a y, I've put, put x. Wherever there was an x, I've put y. 
The second step in this process then is to solve for y. So I'm going to put the x over 1 so that I have a fraction or a ratio equal to a ratio and I can solve by cross multiplying. So I'm going to have x times 3y minus 1 equals 1 times y minus 5. Then I've got to do some algebra and it's going to take me a little bit of space and a little bit of time to do that. Okay, so I'm going to distribute so that I have so that I have x or 3xy minus 1x equals y minus 5. And I'm ultimately trying to get the x by itself, but since I have x, or excuse me, get y by itself, and since I have y's on both sides, I need to try to get them together on one side. So I'm going to minus the y first. So I have 3xy minus y minus x equals negative 5. Then I notice on the left, I have this x, extra x, that doesn't have a y with it. So I'm going to move it to the other side so that I have 3xy minus y equals x minus 5. I then notice that on the left, I have both pieces have a y. So I'm going to factor that out as a common factor. And I'm left with 3x minus 1 equals x minus 5. And I'm almost home free. Remember, I need to isolate the y. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3x minus 1. So I have y equals x minus 5 divided by 3x minus 1. And that's my answer because I finished the process. I've solved for y. And again, here thinking about the notation, we normally use y, but this value, once you solve for y, this is f inverse. Okay, for number 16, it's another application problem, and it's related to inverse variation. Um, we also talked about um, direct, direct variation, but this one says varies inversely, so it's important that you pay attention to the words. Okay, you may want to remember the formula. It's y equals... y equals k looks like my pen's messed up again we'll stop